So this is what your filled in, colored in periodic table um, that you finished up for homework last night should look like. Today we're going to look at some um, other ways you can look at the periodic table. So yesterday we talked about how they're broken up into different families and how the um, elements that are in each different family have certain characteristics that are similar. Now we're going to look a little, a little more structurally at each element. So in a periodic table, the rows are called periods. Okay. Sometimes they skip squares, like if you look at the red row across the top, there's a whole bunch of squares that are missing. Right? There's only the two red um, elements on the, in the top row, and um, there's the eight orange elements in this next row. Okay? Um, but all the rows go from left to the right. Each of the rows is called a period, and that's where it came, the name periodic table came from. In the periodic table, elements have something in common if they're in the same row. All of the elements in a period have the same number of atomic orbitals, or energy levels. Each element in the top row has one orbital for its electrons. In the second row, they have two orbitals for their electrons. And in the third row, they have three orbitals for their electrons. Let's take a look at some pictures. So if you consider the black circle in the middle to be the nucleus of the atom, and that pink ring around it that has the numbers one and two in it, that's the first orbital, or what we call a shell, um, where the electrons stay. Okay. Look at all four of these elements here, neon, sodium, chlorine, and argon. The first shell for all of those elements holds only two electrons. The second shell for all four of these elements holds eight electrons. And if you look from neon, which has nothing in its third shell, to sodium, which has one electron in its third shell, to chlorine, which has seven, and argon, which has eight, you'll see that the third shell also holds eight electrons. The row number equals the number of orbitals, which are also called shells, that house electrons. So if you look at your periodic table, you'll see that hydrogen and helium are in the first row. They only have electrons in that first shell that's colored in pink in these pictures. Lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and neon have electrons in their first shell and their second shell. And then the third row from sodium all the way to argon three of which you can see here on this page, have electrons in their third orbital or shell. Columns on the periodic table are called groups. So columns go up and down like the columns in front of a building and rows go horizontally across. The elements, all the elements in one group, in one column, have the same number of electrons in their outer orbital. So the outer orbital, which orbital is the outer orbital, of course, is going to depend on what row they're in. But then if you look down the columns, you're going to see similarities there. So every element in the first column, which is group one, that includes the alkali metals and hydrogen, has one electron in its outer shell. Every element in the second column, which is group two, has two electrons in its outer shell. Now, like I've said before, we're really concentrating on the first three rows in the periodic table because things get a little tricky when you get to the transition metals um, and the alkaline earth elements, which um, are down below row three, but for um, the first 18 elements on the periodic, periodic table, which is what we're focusing on, 
um, this is our rule that we're following. So again, the group number equals the number of electrons in the outer shell. So if you look at neon and argon, okay, neon is here and argon is here, they're both in the last column, which we call column 18, um, and they both have eight one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons in the outer shell. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Even though they're in different rows. The rows tell us that argon has one more shell than neon does, but they both have eight electrons in that outer shell. If we look at sodium as compared to neon, Sodium's one element up on the periodic table. It's 11, whereas neon has um, an atomic number of 10. So that next 11th electron goes right out here in that, in that third shell. And then when you move across the third row from sodium to magnesium, aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, you get to chlorine, Chlorine's in column 17, so it has seven electrons in its outer shell. It's got this space right here with no electron, but when it gets that electron filled and another proton, it's argon, because argon is in column 18.